Hey, Cletus, take a look at this log file I pulled from the server farm back over there. It looks like everything was going well, but then as we get out towards the end of the file here, look at that. There were a whole shitload of errors right there. I don't know about you, but I didn't get paged about them. I wonder what else is going on we didn't get paged about. I'm gonna go pull some more log files, see what we can find out. All right, it all starts right here in my logging file. And I've got uh, Winston imported in here, which is gonna be my logging transport. And so if we go take a look down here at the bottom, I create a Winston logger here and then combine in some different formats. So the first one we've got is the error formatter. And if we take a look at that, you get errors in different ways. Remember that uh, Winston is just my generic logger that I use inside my application code. And I can show you that right here. So if there's an error in this try catch block, it's gonna log that out with the logger.error method. And same thing if it's a successful response, we just log it out as an info message. So that's where we're using Winston. And then sometimes when you get these errors, they're in different formats. And so this error formatter is really just looking at different ways that we could have potentially received this error. Did we log an error object itself? Or did we log a message and an error object? Or is it just a stack trace? Different things like that. And make sure that I'm able to consistently capture the stack trace and any relevant error message or error details that are going to help us out later. The other formatter that we've got here is ENV tag, which is just tagging the log so that whenever we get it over into Elasticsearch, we can group and filter our logs based on the running environment, whether that's dev or staging or production. And then I've got the transports configured, which transports are how Winston knows where to send the logs. So we've got a console transport here which are the local logs whenever I'm developing here local, locally. It'll just write those out and then I format those a little bit. Let's see, I think if I pop this up right here. Yeah, so whenever you pop those up running locally here, it just logs the error level and then the error message itself or the, the log level, whether it's HTTP, info, error. And it just makes it a little cleaner whenever I'm working locally. The other transport that we have is the log stash transport, and that's for, well, it's for sending logs to log stash. So that log stash transport is configured with a host and a port where, which is the instance where I have log stash running, and that's going to use a config file, something like this, that tells it on UDP port 1514 you're going to receive logs from this application. It's going to filter those. If the log level is HTTP, it's going to break those out using the, the combined Apache log format, which is kind of a standard or a really common format for HTTP logs. It's going to parse the date out of there so that the um, timestamps line up in Elasticsearch nicely. And then it's also going to grab the user agent info out of that log that log message. And then when it's done with all of those logs, it's going to dump them to Elasticsearch. And this is the Elasticsearch host that it talks to. Now, one of the cool things about doing it this way, specifically in this error formatter function that I've got here, is it allows me to pass additional info into Elasticsearch. For example, if we take a look at this um, yeah, at this function right here. So this allows someone to download a file from my application. And then whenever they download that file, we not only log that they retrieved the file, but we capture some additional data here as well. The logged in user, the name of the file that they downloaded, which project they were working on and stuff like that, which I'll show you in a minute because it comes in really cool or it comes in really handy over in Elasticsearch and Kibana whenever you're trying to build an aggregate picture of what's going on in your application. If we jump over and look at Elasticsearch now through Kibana, you can see the log stash index that I've got here 
and all of the fields that we've sent over to it are being parsed and indexed. So let me show you what that looks like whenever we put it all together. So I'm just tailing the log of my Docker container right here. And if I generate some traffic, you'll see those logs start popping in. One of the things you'll notice that I do is you've probably heard of test-driven development. I actually prefer error-driven development where I just write a bunch of code and then stare at the errors going, what in the hell is that all about? And now if we flip back over to Kibana, which is viewing our log stash index in Elasticsearch, we see those exact same logs. And the cool part about that is we can expand this one here. This one was an HTTP log. And you can see that whenever a lot, whenever log stash parsed that log, it grabbed the user agent, parsed the user agent to all of its different components, captured the verb, the HTTP verb that was used and the response code. And if we look at this next log down, you remember that download function I showed you a minute ago. Here it is in action. So we had an info log that we just logged out a message saying that we were retrieving a file, but then we passed in those extra properties as well. And here they are as well, the file name, um, the project ID, the request ID, and things like that. So now that that is in Elasticsearch, we could actually graph that out in Kibana here to create a dashboard showing whatever type of data we wanted to look at in a dashboard type fashion. And there you have it, production level logging on Node.js using Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, and the Winston and Morgan libraries in Node.js. And it's all just integrated into my application, built into the CI-CD pipeline, so I don't have to do anything to make sure that it works across every single environment, right? And the only thing I need, so I need my Node application, which I have to have anyway. The only additional components that I need for this to work are Elasticsearch running somewhere, and it can be an Elasticsearch cluster dedicated to this application, or it can be an Elasticsearch cluster that's used by my entire organization. And then I need a Logstash server, or in the way that I have it built, a Logstash Docker container that's gonna be listening for those logs from my Node application. And again, that doesn't have to be specific to my application. I can have one Logstash server that catches logs from all the different applications in my environment. And so we're able to get some reuse and multi-purpose out of that and don't have a lot of one-off components, one-off infrastructure components that have to be maintained and supported for an application. That's about it. Hope that was helpful for you. If it was, click the like button for me down below. Leave any comments if you wanted to see more or if you have some uh, different ideas on how to handle this, leave comments. and. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you'll get notified whenever I release new videos. All right, I'll see y'all next time.